Good morning, folks. When there is this much eruption potential on our star, we're lucky getting away with just this. A small filament snap is the lone eruptive feature on the Earth-facing disk the last 24 hours, and it's barely got a particle ejected from the corona. The quiet, however, belies the situation as we've got massive plasma filaments right now, plural, the darker ropes above the surface. Look at this one coming over the limb. We have a number of them on the north as well, including the ones towering over the northeastern limb. Now while we lacked major ejecta, the flares are kicking back up again as the Jupiter opposition has heliocentric significance as well as geocentric. It's from the big grouping on the north. We're going to analyze that sector and then the spots trailing it to the left. This big earth-facing group has developed strongly overnight more flares should not be unexpected with any morphing whatsoever. Behind that, we're still magnetically spread, but the positive umbral growth from yesterday is notable, and this is just the first of a number of sunspots we'll see over the next day or two. Believe it or not, here's Gamma Burst number 5, detected at Earth in as many days, this one coming out of the Virgo constellation. 24 hours of solar wind telemetry shows a stabilizing calm, most of all in the speed, yellow. This is allowing a recovery and surge in the near-Earth electron flux and our magnetosphere gets back on its feet and brushes off its shoulders. Latest update from Stanford shows polar magnetic fields on our star in the proper polarity after we again saw a failure to complete the pole flip. 10 is as far into positive as the north field has gone since late in 2013. Could be a good sign of completion, we hope, finally. Maybe. Terrific article sent in about how solar activity affects multiple indices near the Greenland Sea. Since the global warming pause begged the inclusion of another climate input, this is just one of hundreds of papers pointing the finger at the sun. Pretty hard to disagree if you're actually doing the reading. Also got an article from NASA's Earth Observatory on fires, albedo, and change over time. This is linked for you below. We've had two buoys go into event mode overnight. Neither shows a major deviation and both are within normal range of variability based on extremer weather, sea traffic, etc. Wind map. Low in the west central states as the nexus for surrounding air flows and into a convergence that hooks up into the northeast. Still have the coast to coast precipitation zone but the convergence will carry the worst of it as it makes its way east. In Europe, it will be much easier if we pull up the pressure overlay. Purple is low and white is high, leaving the Mediterranean and a couple patches to the north where the low pressure is. Anyone want to fancy a guess where tonight's strongest weather warnings can be found? Last but not least, a weak low churns up and pours remaining monsoon moisture in the northeastern portions of Australia while we've got an earth spot looking convergence heading over New Zealand now. Hopefully, they'll just get the weather coming with it. Got the current conditions followed by shots of our star to close at 6 a.m. in the east, 3 a.m. in California. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.